Hi, my name is Gary Hinnerberg. I'm a compulsive hair puller. I have dealt with trichotillomania since the age of six when I first started pulling my hair. Like so many other people who start pulling their hair, I thought I was the only person in the world who had this truly bizarre urge to pull my hair. And it wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I had ever heard of the word trichotillomania and had come to the realization that there may be other people in the world who pulled hair. In fact, how I first learned about it was by reading a, a column in the newspaper by Ann Landers. And I know there are a lot of people who uh, my age and older who have really learned about trichotillomania by that reading about it in that column. But of course, that was long before the internet. That was long before social media and the ability to, to talk to other people. And, and these days, we have those abilities to, to really get out and, and maybe get support from people. But um, even then, even though there may be those support and safety nets today, um, I, don't, I, I, I don't think it makes any difference if you were alive today with those those things around you or or 50 years ago when when i was growing up with trichotillomania because the fact of the matter is you live in silence you you live with a deep amount of shame you um you don't want to talk to anybody you're very secretive and and i know that that having trichotillomania has profoundly um woven a fabric a fabric of who i am today um, I, I go through my life recognizing my compulsion. And up until the age of 50, I, I told no one. I mean, it was a secret. It was a secret from everybody except my wife and my mom and dad and, and only a very handful. And I literally mean, you know, count on the fingers of one hand, very, very dear friends who I felt I could maybe share this with, but I never shared it with casual acquaintances. I never shared it with, with business associates. I just never shared it. But then something happened. I turned the age of 50, and I suppose maybe when you turn 50, you, you, you look at life differently. I, I decided to shave my head. I, I had been wearing a hairpiece for, um, well, really since I was about 21 years old, just to hide and to cover up these awful spots. I mean, if you, you look, you can, you can, you can see where I've pulled hair and, and it's not a pretty sight. But I decided to go ahead and shave my head. I decided that um, that I was going to become public with the fact that that I deal with trichotillomania. And if if there was a way that my story would have the ability to to maybe help someone because I could be public about it and share it, that that, that would be a good thing. So so I went off and, and wrote a book, a book, my life story. The, the book's title is Urges. And it's a, it, it's a story that, that begins with age six, how it happened that very first day, that very first trigger point where, where um, uh, I was riding in the back of a pickup truck. I, I grew up on a, on a farm in Kansas. And how that, that we hit a deep rut in the field and, and, and how it, it hit my head and a welt had appeared on my head and how I started touching the welt and how it, it felt really... Um, uh, tender, but yet it felt comforting to touch the welt. And then for reasons that I never have understood, I, I plucked a hair, I pulled a hair. And it was just a euphoric, a euphoric kind of sensation that I can't really possibly ever describe. I mean, I'm actually right now getting chills thinking about it because I can remember it so vividly. So I wrote my book. I wrote the story of, of growing up with trichotillomania. And, and I really came to realize through writing the book and telling the story to myself, I, I wrote the book as a, um, uh, I believe that the, it's called a noble intent kind of book. And that is that I wrote it for my parents, for one thing. I wanted my parents to understand that they really weren't at fault for this. And, and you know, you, can you imagine being a parent 50 years ago and not having any sources, resources whatsoever to hear about trichotillomania. I mean, I know they tried to help. They took me to a doctor. The doctor didn't know what to do because doctors didn't know anything about it back then. But my parents did what they felt they could do with the limited resources that they had. I mean, after all, we, we lived in rural parts, so we didn't have access to, to a lot of information. But as I told the story and, and, um, 
uh, told the story for my parents and and for people around me and 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 you know for anybody who has trichotillomania who who deals with compulsive hair pulling anybody who can maybe identify with my process I, I hope it perhaps can help them because for me I find there are three things three things that really made a difference in my life um, as I dealt with compulsive hair pulling and and one of those differences uh, or one of those things was um, first of all, my faith, my faith. Um, I think that that is a foundation for, for many of us. Secondly, I think a really big part of my journey with trichotillomania has been self acceptance, the acceptance of who I am, that this is part of me, that I can't change this, that, that it's just a part of the fabric of my soul and I'm, I can't take it away. And I think the third thing that really, really made a difference for me too was uh, in discovery of gifts and talents. My parents were so loving and so wonderful. Um, on a farm, they they had me in 4-H, and and uh, I had I had various projects, and and among those was getting up in front of uh, a small crowd at at uh, the, the county fair at at our. Uh, um, annual club days, I believe is what it was called, and and uh, talking to a small group, in this case about my, my project, my dairy project. Uh, and um, the the confidence I had after that after that time, I mean here is a, and I was about eight years old, I believe, eight, maybe nine, probably nine years old at the time, and um, I'd been pulling my hair for two or three years and hiding it, I mean combing over hair so that no one can see it, just conceal it. No one knew, but I knew. And yet the amount of confidence that I was able to gain from standing in front of a judge and I won a blue ribbon. And, and then later on other experiences in my life that have really enabled me to, to discover gifts and to discover those talents. And, and I would like to think that that if there's anything I can do as a human being to reach out to other human beings and help them understand and 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 better better deal with this this awful awful compulsion, then I want to be able to do it. I mean, I've had people who have read my book, people who are hair pullers who have who have read read my book, and and uh, I have I have one example of a 16 year old boy. You know, there aren't a lot of guys who pull hair, it, it tends to be more women than, than men um, or boys. And uh, this 16 year old um, had been pulling his hair since he was a child. And, and somehow through the wonders of social media, through someone I connected with on Twitter, who connected me with him on Facebook, um, we messaged, she messaged to him. And anyway, I shared the first chapter of my book with, with him. His name is Stephen. I shared that chapter with him. And a few days later, he messaged me back to tell me about the most amazing thing that had happened for him. He, um, uh, in high school, was unable to articulate what was going on in his mind as a hair puller. You know, there's a lot of bullying that takes place for those of us who pull hair along with children who are just different for whatever reason. But Stephen read part of the first chapter of my book to his class telling them that it was these words that described exactly the thoughts that went through his mind. And he said that the kids gave him a standing ovation. They, they embraced him. They've supported him. And I really believe that in many ways that those words helped change his life. And that's exactly what I want to be able to do in my life with trichotillomania is, is to be able to inspire people and show them how they can go on and, and hopefully live as at least as close to a normal life as possible. Because let's face it, it really does get better as you, as you get older. But even then, the compulsion to pull your hair, it just lasts a lifetime. And I want to be able to help people in many ways. I, I, not, 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 not only, and, and I mean, I, I certainly want to help people on, on the side of hair pulling. I mean, I've spoken at the national conferences for people with trichotillomania, but also in other kinds of, of programs to help them understand how I have gone out and been a success in my business, in my career. And I think those are important things for people to have that hope, that encouragement that life can go on. 
thank you so much for watching this video today and um, and I hope that that uh, my words can be a comfort to other people who have trichotillomania and that um, that there can be a sense of normalcy that can take place in someone's life because of one person reaching out and touching another person's life.